the term skinny fat. That's what we're talking about today. But before we jump into it, I just want to really make it clear. You guys know me. I do not like that term. I don't use it in any of my materials. I feel like it's like fear mongering. It's brainwashy. I just, I just don't like it. I don't like to talk about women's bodies in that way or anybody's bodies, literally anybody's bodies in that way. So even though today's video is going to be about my journey going from skinny fat to toned and healthy. We're not going to use that term. It's just in the context of this video, like between me and you, okay? I just want you to know that about me going into this video. We're going to take a look at what skinny fat kind of looks like in the petite female body for us short women. Um, and then I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step of how you can change your body composition, get into a healthier place so that you're not skinny fat if that's one of your goals. And the only reason I'm using that term is because it's widely known and so many of you come to me, come to me asking about how to fix that, okay? And it doesn't need fixing. If you wanna change it, you're absolutely allowed to change it. And if you don't, you're absolutely allowed to not want to change it too. There's no right or wrong. This video is just gonna be kind of commentary on some of the, like the societal norms and pressures about skinny fat and also the science and how you can go about making positive changes in your body composition so that you're not skinny fat anymore if that's what you want to do. Before we get into this, please give this video a like and a thumbs up to support my channel, to support the petite female community, the short girl gang, and um, subscribe for content tailored to petite women, specifically health, fitness, wellness, nutrition, that type of thing. I'm a certified personal trainer, certified nutritionist, and I'm going to be sharing my story today as well as giving a little bit of advice as far as I've helped thousands of other petite women get in shape, and this is the advice that works best for the petite female body type. Now, starting off with what skinny fat is. So for me, I'm just pulling up a picture here of what I looked like when I was skinny fat. And if any of you guys have seen my other videos, you know that I used to be a competitive athlete. I was a competitive fencer for 18 years. I did international competitions. I was very elite in the sport, but even though I had a lot of muscle, there was periods of times where I didn't, like when uh, I had injuries or um, there were lots of periods of times in my life where I was only focusing on cardio and not weight training it, weight training at all and did get skinny fat. And sometimes just what that looked like on my body, looking at pictures is like, I carried like a lot of belly fat. My, I looked kind of weak and like frail. I kind of just like felt small, but didn't have abs and like had cellula cellulite, like a lot of cellulite in my legs or like my stomach area or my arms. Those were like my very, those were my insecure body parts back then. This was like 10 years ago now. Um, or maybe a little less, but a long time ago. So for me, skinny fat was like high emphasis on cardio. So maybe you're doing that too. Like literally running so much every day, thinking that's what I needed to do to lose fat, being stuck in that mindset. It was also characterized by not eating a very good nutritious diet um, and also dieting in general. So like restricting my calories. When I ate, I would like eat salad. I'd skip meals. I didn't have um, nutritious food and I would binge eat on like uh, goldfish and like cheese crackers, things like that. I just didn't have a good, healthy, consistent lifestyle and I had very little protein intake as well at the time. And so what the result that you get from focusing on like way too much cardio and not great nutrition and not building muscle through lifting weights is usually like your the number on the scale might be good for you or even low or underweight, but then you don't look like you're in shape. Like you don't look like the weight that you're at. Like you hold bloat or cellulite in places you don't like, or you just like, you're like, damn, like I feel like I'm working out and I'm dieting. I'm like restricting my calories, but I'm so low energy, like I don't feel good and I don't look fit. Like when I look in the mirror, I don't have muscle definition or tone and I can't get smaller really because the number on the scale is so low, but I still have all this fat that I wanna lose. Like how do I lose it, right? If this is you, let me know in the comments if this is something you've struggled with. This was totally me and you can see in this picture, especially like I just felt like, I feel like I look like very small, but I still have like fat that I'm carrying in certain places and cellulite and whatnot. And before we go a, a, a touch further, I do wanna say like fat's normal. Body fat is very normal. And one of the reasons why I feel like women have been, myself included, have been like totally brainwashed to think that we need to lose it is because we naturally have more of it than men. 
and in like a male oriented society where we're comparing ourselves to them a lot, um, it's really easy to look at men and be like, we should be as lean as them. But the fact of the matter is our biology does not lend itself to that. With the hormones we have and the fact that our bodies have reproductive organs and are meant to carry children, uh, it's really hard to lose belly fat and thigh fat and arm fat, um, much harder than it is for a man to. Men are, are you know, naturally sitting at lower body fat percentages and women are naturally sitting at higher body fat percentages and it's totally natural and totally normal. And cellulite is as well. You're never going to be able to get rid of every little ounce of cellulite here and there. And you have to just keep in mind like the advertisements you see, the things you see on Instagram, these are highly curated images, there's editing involved, there's, they're not the norm, right? So just like remember when you're striving for certain goals, just make sure they're coming from a place of like self-acceptance and focusing on what's best for your health first. Um, and of course, having aesthetic goals is totally fine. I totally support having aesthetic goals, but remember that like you're beautiful the way you are. You don't need to change anything to love your body um, and make the process as fun as possible because we have been so brainwashed as women to think that we need to be like, have washboard abs and have like no cellulite and that's just not realistic. Um, what is realistic is making positive changes in your body composition over time. You can slowly decrease fat and increase muscle. That's totally possible to do. It's just not gonna happen overnight and it's never gonna be like it is in like advertisements with like flawless airbrushing and whatnot. So I am going to take you through the steps of how I went from skinny fat to more toned and focusing on my health, having higher muscle um, mass in my body, just basically changing your body composition from fat, like higher fat, lower muscle to higher muscle, lower fat. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but Gary just got in the shower, so we're gonna hear showering in the background now. So step one for, I don't wanna say fixing it, it's not fixing it. Step one for changing your body composition and like leaving the skinny fat in the past, okay, is to do an audit of your nutrition. This is really important because a lot of women who come to us in our program, the Petite Power Program, who are skinny fat are way, 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 way under eating in calories. And you can't be under eating if you wanna build muscle. So the first thing you need to do is download the My Macros app or download My Fitness Pal turn off the exercise calorie adjustment marker thing where it like changes the number of calories you should eat in a day based on how much calories you're burning. That Just turn that off, it does nothing good for you. And just track what you're eating for three days. Do not judge yourself, do not change it based on what you think you should be doing. Do not try to hit a goal, do not restrict. Just like eat how you normally would and just input it in. If you have a food scale and you can weigh out your portions, that's preferred. If you don't, you can kind of eyeball it. Keep in mind though, if you eyeball it, it's not gonna be nearly as accurate and we do want some accurate numbers. You can buy a food scale on Amazon for like literally $5 or less um, and just weigh your food just as an exercise. It's just gonna be for like a learning opportunity. And if you guys have seen my videos, you know that I am a huge advocate of journaling, food journaling, just to learn and increase your level of awareness. So step one here is once you have this audit, you have this journal, you need to evaluate if you're eating enough calories. Petite women tend to be eating less than 1200 a day, which is literally less than what a growing child would need. You are a grown ass woman, okay? Even if you're five foot one and three quarters or 4'11 and a half, and yes, those do count, you still need food to live, to have energy, to regulate your hormones, to literally build muscle, be strong, increase your bone density, like so many things that you need to eat calories for. Um, and restricting it is not going to lead to positive changes in body composition when you're already that low in calories. If you came to me as a petite woman, and this is very rare, this is like one out of 50 clients that we get. If you're eating like 2,500 calories as a petite woman, you're obese or you're gaining weight, that's a place where you might be able to do a safe calorie deficit. If you wanna learn more about calorie deficit, just watch my video, it's called Calorie Deficits for Petites. We don't advocate for that though. Most petite women would not benefit from restricting more food. We actually need to learn how to reprogram our brains to embrace calories and start to nourish our body with more calories so that you can start building muscle and start changing your body composition. If you are like in a plateau, you're eating a thousand calories a day, you're skinny fat, you are holding on to unwanted cellulite, you will not change your body composition by decreasing more calories. Just doesn't work like that. Um, and the good news is once you embrace this, it's gonna feel amazing because you're gonna get to start eating more whole foods, you're gonna feel better, you're gonna have more energy, and you're gonna start to see these improvements in your body composition and you'll feel stronger over time. So that's step one. 
Now, step two is to start eating in a more protein forward manner. This is what one of the first things I did to change my body composition. I started eating about 0.8 to one gram of protein per pound of body weight. At the time when I was skinny fat, I think I was like 110 pounds or something, I would aim for 110 grams of protein. Now, if you're over 145 pounds, I wouldn't eat more protein than that in a day because it just the calories will start to get, you won't have as much left for carbs and fats and you need those. Um, but if you can just start at around, you know, don't go over 145. Like if you're 170 pounds, you can still get enough protein eating about 145 in a day or 130 around there. It doesn't have to be over that, that weight. It doesn't have to keep going up. Um, but for everyone else, you know, trying to get over a little bit over 100 grams of protein per day is going to be huge in starting to change your body composition. Also, changing the way that your body stores fat. Protein is one of the um, most, it has the highest thermic effect when you eat it. So you burn more calories consuming and metabolizing protein than you do carbs or fats. And it's also harder to store as excess energy unless you're eating the caloric surplus, in which case any, any macronutrient, whether it's protein, fats, or carbs, if you're over your calories, can result in storing it. Um, however, if you're slowly increasing your calories, you're offsetting some of that increase with um, lifting weights, you won't store it as fat. You'll just start building muscle and having more muscle, if you've watched any of my other videos, will start to increase your metabolism and it'll start to burn fat when you're at rest. In case you guys don't know, our daily caloric energy expenditure is made up of mostly the calories we burn when we're not working out. 70% of the calories we burn in a day comes from doing absolutely nothing, like sleeping, watching TV, hanging out. The other 30% comes from your exercise, which is nothing. It's actually more like 10%. So if you come to any of my free trainings, I go into this in depth. So if you're like, if your method has been like cardio to the walls, like burn as many calories as humanly possible and uh, in an exercise class and just like sweat as hard as possible. It doesn't matter how hard you work out in that hour. It's only accounting for 10% of your total daily energy expenditure. And that's not going to move the needle. You want to focus on increasing your resting metabolism, which is the 70% of all the other time in your day. And when you increase your resting metabolism, you're, you'll burn more calories at rest. You'll actually start burning fat even in your sleep. So for petite women who have naturally slower metabolisms, we're smaller, we eat less food in a day, rather than going to decrease your calories, you've got to focus on your metabolism and increasing your resting metabolism through strength training. Um, we will get there. That's like actually another point in my six steps. Um, but the first place that starts is with your nutrition and increasing your protein so you can start to nourish your body, like fuel your body and build muscle. Okay, step three here for what I did, I started lifting weights and this changed my life. You guys know it changed my absolute life and I still lift weights like 10 years later. Um, what I look like today is a totally different scenario and I attribute it almost 100%. I mean, nutrition plays a big role here, but a lot of percent to starting to lift weights instead of focusing on cardio to drive that progress. If you are a complete beginner, we do have a free guide. It's excellent. It has a free week of workouts. It has HD video tutorials. You can download it at smelletics.com slash guide and just get started learning how to lift weights as a petite. Key, key, key to lift weights. And if you're getting started, you can start with like three to four, three to five days a week, you know, 45 minute sessions. Just use a pair of dumbbells, start with like five to 10 pounds and go from there. I will also say focus on total body workouts at first. Don't worry about any fancy workout splits. The trap that I was stuck in when I was skinny fat was doing ab workouts and cardio. Like my brain was, was certain. It was certain that I just needed to do more cardio and more crunches and I would get the toned look I was going for. And it's crazy how the brain works, right? Because I just did that so many years in a row. I did it all through college. I did it after college. I kept forcing that method and thinking, okay, I just need to eat like, I need to be better, right? I'm not good enough. I need to like be stricter. I need to have like skip meals. I need to have salads for lunch and I need to only do more cardio and more crunches. And like, I'm just not doing enough and that's why it's not working. That's so wrong and so not true. And I am telling you now that those ab workouts are doing nothing. It's great to train your core, but you can train your core through lifting weights and you don't need to do like targeted ab workouts. They don't burn fat in your belly. Instead, focus on the lifting weights, total body workouts, get your heart rate up through training and just use cardio as something for like mental benefits. Like 
if you enjoy bike riding or you enjoy running, you can still do it. Just don't make it the focus or what should be driving your changes in body composition composition because it doesn't have that effect. It really just increases your heart rate and pumps blood through your body. It's not burning fat uh, any more or any less than weight training. Weight training is going to really, really help you in the long run in building that muscle, increasing your metabolism, and then that increase of metabolism will help you burn fat. Um, so I can't emphasize that enough. Now step four, after you've started increasing or implementing lifting weights, now is the time to use a principle known as progressive overload. This is when you progressively overload your workouts in intensity, either by increasing the weight you're lifting, shortening the rest periods and increasing the intensity that way, um, increasing the time under tension or the tempo of exercises, or increasing the volume and the sets, not the reps, just the sets. You wanna keep the reps between eight and 12 and that hypertrophy place. And um, if you wanna increase the sets a little bit more, three to five sets, that's fine. Progressive overload is absolutely scientifically proven and necessary for continuing to get stronger and to continuing to build muscle. If you do yoga or Pilates or like anything that's body weight related and you've noticed you've hit a plateau and you no longer can make progress, it's because you need more stimulus on the body. You need to progressively overload your body to get out of that plateau. So that's step four and that's what I started doing. It took me so long to like listen to this advice, but once I finally did, I noticed like I wasn't gonna get bulky, it was fine and it was actually helping me to keep going on my fitness journey and keep making those changes in body composition that I wanted to make. Now for petite women who are, you know, eating low amount of calories, if you're in that like 1200 range, that's very low. We don't want you to take any more calories away, right? We already went over why. Instead, it's so much better to learn how to eat more food, but then increase your non-exercise energy expenditure through like your step count, getting up and walking more throughout the day. Like go just add two to 3000 additional steps per day. Uh, rather than adding like more cardio. This is just gonna help increase the movement a little bit rather than take away calories, which can aid in your fat loss and just help you be healthier, feel, feel healthier in your body um, rather than adding these like intense cardio sessions. And it's also better just for longevity and health to just get up and move more throughout the day. I really, really saw a big difference when I started taking back some of those intense cardio sessions and just adding more daily movement into my day, standing more and walking around more. Okay, step six is the hardest one. It's about your mindset. You have to know that changing your body composition takes time. And while we're so conditioned to get quick fixes overnight and to think that we can do it really fast, the reality of the matter is that there is no such thing as a quick fix and it's just gonna take time to change your body composition. I cannot tell you guys how many Instagram DMs I get asking if, you know, Chloe Ting's five week ab challenge or whatever is good for them. I don't know because I haven't done it myself, but I do know that challenges and quick fixes don't exist. Challenges are not helpful. They aren't making meaningful lifestyle changes, which is what you need to make meaningful changes in your body composition. And doing absolutely random workouts on YouTube will lead to random results because there's no progression. There's no use of progressive overload. So if you're a petite woman who's doing like random YouTube workouts or mostly body weight, you're not consistent, it will be very hard to change your body composition. Remember that it's okay if it takes time, find things that you love to do, find ways to move your body you enjoy and just make it as fun as possible because we've honestly been brainwashed into thinking that we need to lose fat and you don't. You really don't have to do anything you don't wanna do. You're absolutely amazing the way you are. But if you wanna change your body composition for any reason, just go into it knowing it's gonna take time because you're doing it the right way, you're doing it the healthy way, and you're doing it the sustainable way. And that's totally okay. In my journey, it did take, you know, few months to, you know, get that first result. And then after that, since then, I've been repeating, rinsing and repeating the same method, and it's been many, many years, and I've just been kind of adding layers to that journey and like increasing you know, continuing to see progress on my journey, but it's a lifestyle now. I'm not really doing it for any reason other than to feel good. And I'm not super concerned with the number on the scale or, you know, my body fat percentage anymore. I'm just not in that phase of my life. Um, but I've noticed that it's gotten easier and easier and it's continued to get better and better over time. And so if you can just have that patience and remember that quick fixes aren't real, it can really go a long way in keeping you motivated. And then also remember that it's normal to have fat. 
I promise you I can take many photos that are unflattering angles and show you guys cellulite that I have. I'm not going to do this because I don't think it's very good thing to do um, unless you wanted me to, but obviously I have fat still. It's not like my body fat percentage is zero. It's like 15. So I'm still going to have it. I definitely carry it in all the same places as you as far as arms and stomach and glutes or butt, whatever, thighs, like definitely 100%. So just remember, society is gonna make you think that you shouldn't have any fat, but you should have some fat. It's healthy and you need it to be able to have your period as a woman and have your hormones be in a healthy place. So don't let society get in your head about that. Now I know a lot of you guys are gonna ask me how long it took to change my body composition. I would say the first time I was really, really consistent and dedicated time to it and I really stopped doing cardio, I lifted weights, I stopped doing hit every day. I, you know, I did all the, the steps that I told you about in this video. I was able to make pretty significant changes in 12 weeks, but I was very dedicated. For some women who have been chronically dieting or yo-yo dieting for a long time, it can take longer. It can take longer than three months. It can take six months. It can take up, you know, even longer sometimes. It really depends on where you're starting off, your starting body composition, um, your age, your metabolic health, how many calories you're eating in a day. But I can say if you implement these six changes, you will get moving in the right direction. And if you can just trend in the direction you wanna go, then you will eventually get where you wanna go. So let me know what has been your journey with this word that I really don't like, skinny fat. Do you feel like that's something you've struggled with before? And if so, let me know what questions you have about changing your body composition as petite. I will be happy to answer them below or in a follow-up video. And if you learned something in this video, please give it a thumbs up and definitely subscribe if you want more content tailored to petite women, especially in the fitness and nutrition space. Um, that's what I focus all my videos on. And the last thing I'll say is we are currently accepting clients into our 12 week a transformation program for petite women. It's called Petite Power. We have teams, we have an A team of dietitians, accountability coaches. Um, I'm the head coach at an amazing, powerful community of petite women who are super successful and working on the same things as you. So if you would like to hop on a call with me and discuss um, your enrollment, you can do so below. You can also enroll for in the next few days on our website and then we close the doors for a bit. Um, so I hope to see you in the program if you're interested. And other than that, you guys, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I will see you next week. Bye.